Awesome. Now we are recording. <coughs> so like I said, welcome to the Minimizing Injury Risks webinar with Denise Smith. Um, we're going to get started and I'm going to do a quick bio of Denise. She's a highly qualified, credentialed individual and uh, she's going to do a great job in uh, leading tonight's discussion on um, minimizing injuries as it pertains, pertains to endurance running. So for those of you, uh, Denise Smith graduated from Marquette University with a master's degree in physical therapy. She is also a consultant for the Russian Olympic National Triathlon team. She instructs courses in kinesiology at a local college here in the Chicagoland area. Denise also travels around the country as part of, part of the Pose Method education team uh, with a lecture series on injury prevention and treatment along with the running technique certification course. Uh, Denise is a recre recreational runner and triathlete herself. She opened Smith Physical Therapy and Running Academy to help her patients get better faster and to help athletes run smarter. Uh, she spent her years obtaining certifications that allow her to treat each patient as an individual with a focus on hands-on manual therapy techniques, techniques, excuse me, functional movement patterns, return to sports testing, and advanced treatment of athletes of all levels. If you're in the Chicago area, you're definitely going to want to come on out and set an appointment up with her to see her. And for those of you who aren't local, Denise also offers virtual instruction for runners as well. So she's got something for everyone. So without further ado, Welcome, Denise. Thanks, Seth. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I appreciate you guys spending time with us tonight. I know you've had long days at work, so um, I appreciate you being here. Um, and I, you know, I have to say it's been great to work with Seth, and he's very inspiring. Um, and then to be able to work with his team members like you guys, I just think, first of all, that you're even training to run Chicago is amazing. Um, but then that you're adding the fundraising portion on that is um, just again, very inspiring. And so I'm grateful for getting to talk to you guys tonight. Um, and you know, I, I know there's some people on here from New York city, so, um, welcome. And it's exciting to, you know, the New York city marathon. One of these days I'm going to get out there to watch that. Cause I think it's just awesome. Um, so I want to start this out by, um, just talking a little, it, it, luckily, the Olympics is happening right now. So I can relate a lot of this for those of you that have been watching it, all the track stuff starts in a couple days. But, um, if any of you have seen Michael Phelps, like how could you miss that rock star? Um, but the big, big talking points that everyone's talking about are those marks that are on his body. So the cupping that he was getting. And so what I want you to think about is as runners, we have a tendency to just run. We don't strengthen, we don't do flexibility work, we don't take care of our bodies because all we have to do is run. So just ask yourself, if Michael Phelps only swam, do you think he would be as good as he is? So um, that's what I want you to keep in mind as we go through this is, you know, maybe what's missing in your, your routine to help you keep healthy and keep your joints um, and your muscles moving well. Because um, what would Michael Phelps do? That could be our new question. <laughs> what would Michael Phelps do? Um, so as we go through at any point, if you guys have questions, just let me know. Um, a couple weeks ago, you had a great presentation from Karen um, where she kind of set the stage for how injuries happen. Um, and so this is to piggyback on her presentation to get a little more in depth on what you guys can do to prevent that. So um, sorry, the title is a little blurry here on here, but it's, you know, this is really about minimizing your injury risks. So um I know some of you might be younger on here that may not remember these friends episodes, but the, the clip here is when Phoebe was talking about natural running. Um, and I think that we have a tendency to think that, well, if I just go out and run, I'll be okay. Um, but there is a, there is a skill to this sport. It's like any sport, you know, in basketball, you need to learn how to do free throws. Um, in swimming, you need to learn how to swim In running. You need to learn how to run. There is a specific, um, technique to running um, that allows for proper biomechanics. So one of the first places and one of the most common places that injuries come from is poor technique. Um, and technique is, again, a skill um, that takes practice. So a lot of the things we work with here at Smith Running Academy are teaching people the actual skill of running, where your foot should be landing, where your hips need to be, how your shoulders can help you. Um, so tonight's kind of a brief overview, but there are some things you guys have time to change. And I know Chicago is the time clock is ticking a little bit here on Chicago, but there's still time for you guys to make some tweaks to your technique. Um, balance and stability are a really big component of 
preventing injuries. So at no point in time during running are both feet on the ground. So balance comes in the fact that when one foot is on the ground, the other one is up in the air. And when that other foot is up in the air, your hips and your buttock muscles have to talk to make sure that your pelvis stays aligned. And if they're not stable, if they're not all firing when they should be firing, or if you have poor balance on that standing leg, it can really throw off um, your ability to be efficiently moving. Um, endurance, I think we think about endurance as mileage, um, but endurance can also be thought of as your cardiovascular fitness, as well as endurance of your muscles. Are your muscles able to do the same thing over and over again for 26.2 miles? Um, and if you're not strong enough, if you have decreased strength, those muscles can't support you for that distance. When you're running, um, and about the pace that we all run, when we're training for marathons, your body has to absorb one to two times your body weight, um, sometimes up to three times your body weight. So think about if your muscles aren't strong enough to hold two to three times your body weight, um, how are you going to do this for 26.2 miles? Um, and the structure that is affected the most usually are our joints. We'll notice things like, oh, I have a tight IT band or my Achilles is starting to talk back to me. Um, and it's usually because you're stressing a joint above or below that area. So a lot of times your knee joint is taking a lot of impact. So your IT band starts to react or your ankle is absorbing a lot of the shock. So your Achilles starts to react. So um, understanding the role your joints play in taking care of your body is really important. Um, and getting on and off the ground is really important to minimizing the injury. I, I'll have a lot of patients that come in and they'll say, you know, I went back to running. I'm recovering from my injury and I went really slow. I, I went really, really slow. And that's almost the worst thing you could do because that means you're spending too long on the ground, which is impact. So I want you on and off the ground super quick, even if it means you're not running very fast. I don't care about speed. I care about cadence or how quickly your feet are coming on and off the ground. Um, and what structures are usually injured? injured? Well, the obvious ones are muscles, tendons, ligaments, and bones. Um, they kind of go in order here of the most easily healing or the fastest healing ones to the ones that are the most serious. So muscle injuries, we can usually recover from pretty quick. They have great muscles, have great blood supply. There's a lot of surrounding structures, but as we get down to those tendons, ligaments, and bones, stress to a bone will lead to a stress fracture. And so you really want to make sure that we are minimizing stress to the bone so that we don't end up with really serious injuries, the kind of injuries that pull us from running. Um, and there's things you can do to avoid injuries. So the my obviously my passion is addressing the actual skill of running, using technique to improve your understanding of how you should be doing this sport. Um, I, I wish that before marathon training, people spent a good one to two months working on their technique so that by the time they actually are into their training, training they can worry about things like mileage and strengthening and flexibility and don't have to worry so much about technique. Um, but it, it, it does take a good month or two, if you've never worked on your technique, to improve your technique and improve your form. Um, loving your joints is another one of the things that I think most of us runners forget to do. So we'll talk about stretching. You know, people will say, well, I stretch out after, I stretch out before. Um, or some people will argue with me saying the research is spotty on um, when you should stretch, which I agree with. I don't, I guess I don't care um, how much you're stretching. I care about if you're doing it at all, number one. And number two, are you making the joints flexible, not just the muscles? Because those muscles come and go from the joints. So if the joint is health healthy and the joint can flex and extend the way it is supposed to, that's where true flexibility comes from. Um, so just making sure your joints get a lot of love. Strengthening the muscles that surround it is obvious. You know, you need to be strong to do what you're about to do. Um, would Michael Phelps be able to swim as fast as he does with, without strengthening? Um, would Drew Brees be able to throw a football as far as he can throw it without strengthening? So athletes of all sports have to strengthen. It's no different for runners. Um, unweighing your lower body is a concept that we don't think about. So for those of you that are in a place where you could jump up and down, now if you're listening to this in a coffee shop, you might not be able to do this. But right now, if you guys can, stand up and lock your shoulders in place and jump up and down. 
Seth is doing it right now. It's hilarious. So lock those shoulders down and try to jump up and down. Now use your shoulders to help you and be very light through your shoulder and jump up and down. And what is the difference in what you guys feel? Do you feel like you can get a little higher? Do you feel like you're a little bit lighter on your feet? Um, you should feel the difference. And so the importance with that is that your shoulders can help unweigh your lower body. So it can help make you lighter on your feet because now you're not, you're using your upper body to help your lower body. Um, and the last, the last thing is, you know, being elastic. So elastic girl down there. Um, she, one of my kids' favorite superheroes, but, um, so being elastic means the ability to contract and relax those tendons the way they're designed to. So think about Tigger. Um, it's only cause Seth and I have little kids that we totally relate to Tigger, but, um, as Tigger's bouncing along, if he spends too long on the ground, he's not going to be able to go as fast as he as he would. He'll have to load and then spring up and then sit again and then spring up instead of being very bouncy and very light on his feet. Um, so working on how to improve that, which we'll talk about in a second, um, will help you too. Um, so those of you that are running Chicago, um, we got, I don't know, we're what, like 60 days out? What's today? The 10th? So two more months? Um, Halfway through training. Already. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so Sometimes if we start tweaking your technique, it gets a little frustrating at this point. So what I'm going to go through in these next few slides is just some quick stuff that you can try that won't mess with your form too much, but at least will start giving you a sense of how you can improve it. Um, the first one is cadence. So cadence is sometimes it's talked a lot about in the magazines, but I don't think a lot of people understand it. So cadence is how fast you're coming on and off your feet um, or how fast you're getting in and out of the running position. So what you could try is download a metronome app. The one I use on my iPhone is called ProTap. It's free. Um, or one of my patients just brought in a metronome that she'd bought on Amazon for like $3 that she clips to her sports bra. Um, and what set it to about 180. Um, and what it's going to be doing is you're going to hear this beeping sound. Let me see if I can get mine up. And what you can imagine, and again, if you're sitting there and you want to move a little bit while we're talking, um, you're going to try to make your feet come on and off the ground to match the beeping. Um, and if you think, so any of you that did music, um, this is an app that musicians use to help them keep the beat. And it's the same thing. It's to help you keep your stride. So what it sounds like is... So what's happening is every time that you can hear the um, wooden block sound, that's when your feet should be coming on and off the ground. Um, and what it makes you do is you cannot spend that long on the ground. You have to be on and off that foot as quickly as possible. That's pretty quick, right? Yes, it's yeah. pretty quick. But if all of you just get up and start running in place, you're probably all at about 170 or 180. And it starts slowing down when we start running for some reason. But our natural tendency is to run there because, and that 180 is where research has found that our Achilles, our Achilles tendon, that big thick tendon in the back of your ankle is the elastic, it has the most elasticity. So like Tigger, that's where it functions the best is about 180 steps per minute. So again, if you guys just randomly start running in place, you'll probably come pretty close to matching that. Um, so that's why 180 is that magic number that you'll read about in the magazines. It's just because that's where research has found the Achilles can function the best. Um, and as a result of coming on and off your feet really quick, you'll end up shortening your stride. Um, you won't have time to spend too long on that foot because you have to come on and off it really quickly. So it's just a fun thing to practice. Um, and once in a while, what you could do is put the metronome on, maybe at the first quarter mile, put your metronome on, turn it off and then turn it back on another quarter mile later and see if you're keeping up with it. And so it's a great way to test yourself. I personally really like it because when I was learning to improve my form, I needed something to tell me if I was on or off because I would either go too fast or too slow. Um, and so cadence is not about speed because I can do 180 steps per minute just running in place and obviously I'm not going anywhere. So um, it's not about speed. It's just about your feet coming on and off the ground. Um, as I was talking about earlier, flexibility, you know, loving the joint, getting the joint to be flexible um, will help with muscle elasticity. So some people use flexibility as a warm up. So I posted two of my really, my favorite ones here. Um, if you ever go on, um, on Pose Method has a YouTube channel. Um, and if any of you want to check out their channel, let email me and I'll get you a code for a free month. 
So you can check out some of the videos. They have an amazing flexibility program that some you can use portions of it for a warm up, um, and you can do it also as a cool down or something to just do while you're watching TV. So giving those joints some love. So my two favorite ones are on here. One is this figure four rotational stretch. So there I am, um, where I'm, my ankle is on my knee and I'm rocking my hips back and forth. So as my um, right knee comes up and over my body, I'll feel it in my right hip. And as I bring it back to the other side, I'll feel it in my left hip. Um, and the other one is Spider-Man, which you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and that's about mobilizing the hip anteriorly or to the front. So a lot of hip flexor problems in most runners. So this is a spot where our joints tend to be really tight is in the front of our hip. Um, yeah, Seth is pointing to himself, which I can attest to. <laughs> so um, now the other last week um, or two weeks ago, um, Alex did the Yobility. And I, you know, I had never heard of Yobility until I met Alex and him and I did a session together and it pretty much changed how I view yoga. Sometimes yoga, I like it because it's very relaxing, but I sometimes get anxious as a runner. I'm like, I, I can't sit here this long. I can't. And then I'd feel stupid because I couldn't hold these positions that these other women were holding beautifully. And so I just felt really stupid. And so Alex introduced me to a way to address some of the problems I have as a runner um, with a yoga ball or a lacrosse ball, which I love, but while I'm moving. So it's positions that I just really appreciated as a runner and showed me just how tight I was. And I wasn't as bored. So um, I, I just love your ability. He's going to be actually be doing a couple classes with us. So any of you that are in the area, um, keep an eye on my website. I mean, you can see when Alex's classes are coming up here. Um, and a plug for uh, if you haven't viewed or listened to the Yobility webinar, you can check that out on the YouTube page, yes. Off Running YouTube page. Um, and Alex is going to be doing a little YouTube blurb for runners on why Yobility is so important for runners. So I think, you know, he, as a runner himself, um, I think he's really come onto something that all of us need. So I'm very grateful to him. So, um, strengthening is probably this well you guys I, I don't know how many of you are out there I wish there was like this button where you guys could raise your hand if you do this like how many of you actually spend the time to strengthen those support supporting muscles um so strengthening is hard it's a one more thing you guys have to add to your um your routine it's one more thing you have to worry about but if you become efficient at it and you pick the key muscle groups you can make it just part of your workout in your routine so I've listed the, the support muscles that are the most important for runners. So I know arms are on there and most runners are like, why do I need to strengthen my arms? But it's because think about what your shoulders do. We, we talked about it earlier, how they help unweigh your lower body. Um, and I'm sure there are a couple of you out there that end up with those trigger points in the back of your shoulder blade um, that start getting really sore by the end of the run. So the stronger those muscles are to help your lower body, the better off you'll be. Abs and low back, super important to your core. Hip muscles, the one group that most runners don't even know how to strengthen. Um, and hamstrings and glutes, we're put in, and, you know, quads, we understand that as runners, right? We, we see those in the magazines. Um, your calf is just to help really prevent injuries. Your calf is really important in absorbing the shock. I don't want your joints absorbing the shock. The shock. I want your Achilles and your calf muscles to be what absorb it. Um, and the intrinsic foot muscles are it's like the core of your foot. So think about you, you strengthen the core of your um, trunk. Intrinsic foot muscles are the core of your foot. So these are the little guys that are in, you know, if you curl your toes, those are your big flexors. These are the ones that are on other sides of those. So they really help with balance. Um, and so again, remember your foot is hitting the ground. And for any of you that trail run, you're having to accommodate to different levels on the ground. You need those muscles to be able to accommodate really quickly. Um, so in this next slide, I listed some of my favorite exercises. You can Google these, or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, please feel free to email me and I'll send you a picture of what they look like. Um, so I, if, you know, if all you do is a version of each of these muscle or these exercises in your workout, um, you'll see the difference in your ability to run. So the one I want to talk about right now is hip dips. So about halfway down under hip muscles, hip dips, um, by far my favorite strengthening exercise for runners. Um, and what you end up doing is driving your hips 
up and down into a position. So again, I will, did I, no, um, I will send any of you a picture that wants to do it, or you can go on my YouTube channel, which is under Smith Physical Therapy and Running Academy. I actually have a 30 day strengthening program on there where um, I list out um, a pre and post tests you can do. And then um, I'm pretty sure I'll double check tonight, but I think the 30 day program is on there. Um, and it's a version of hip dips, push ups, um, and abdominal work. And so you'll see the difference in how you feel and your before and after results. Um, but hip dips, if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see how to do a hip dip and the ver the variety of ways to do it. Um, so, um, again, if you need to see, you can Google these, but, um, if you guys need to, and I'm just doing that for time, but if you need help at any point, just email me and I'll send those out to you. Um, unweighing, we talked about this a little bit. So thinking about skipping, um, as you come up and down in the air, I don't want, you know, the thing that most of us probably learned when we ran truck track or cross country was, um, height. You know, that coaches would say, drive your knees up, drive your knees up. I don't want you guys going high up in the air because as a runner, you need to be going forward. So skipping, I want you guys to use to think about being very light on your feet and light through those shoulders. So in the second, this is this girl's name is Nicole. Um, Nicole's second picture there, you'll see her shoulders are actually up in the air and how that would help lighten her lower body. Um, so next time you try skipping, which is a great warm-up drill, by the way, um, think about being very light through your shoulders. Um, the other one are sitting hop-ups. So if you guys are sitting in a chair right now, and I'm going to try to make Seth do this. Um, he's on my rolling chair, so I might have to hold it for him. But you're going to, I want you to sit kind of at the back of the chair with your legs out in front of you. And so hold your feet up in the air, and your butt is going to be uh, in contact with the chair. And what you're going to try to do is use your shoulders to lift up your lower body. Imagine that I'm trying to slide a piece of paper underneath, out from underneath your butt, and I'm like, try to hop your butt up in the air. We should tape this. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So think about using your shoulders to lift you off the, the bottom of that chair. So it's like, I'm, again, I'm trying to slide something out from underneath you. It works really well on the floor too. Um, but doing like five of those in a row and then getting up and run, you'll feel how much lighter weight your shoulders are. Um, so it's awkward to do in a rolling chair, as Seth just found out. But on the ground, it works great. Um, if you're at the gym sitting on a bench, it really works great. Yeah, it feels weird to like try to lift your whole body up just by shrugging your shoulders. But you'll really feel what it feels like to unweigh your body. Um, and elasticity, like we were talking about, that quick on and off your feet. Think about jumping rope and doing an agility ladder. So jumping rope... Um, this is Sylvester Stallone. I was looking for Chuck Norris because I think Chuck Norris is like the ultimate stud. But uh, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, you know, he's doing a different pattern. So think about jumping rope while you're running and then drop the rope and continue running. You'll see how quickly your feet come on and off the ground um, or doing a pattern like he's doing and then dropping that and running or doing an agility ladder like the guy on the right. Um, do an agility ladder and then go into a run. For those of you that don't have an agility ladder, just get some sidewalk chalk, draw an agility ladder on and on the ground, and then do a little pattern, one foot in, one foot out, whatever pattern you want, hopping. And then as soon as you come out of the agility ladder, run. And you'll see how, again, how quickly you can come on and off your feet and how much lighter you'll feel. And so the last thing we're gonna talk about is speed training. So speed training, I know you guys do it Twice a week? Once a week? Yeah, one to two times a week, usually okay. depending on the program that uh, the individual is following. So I want to make sure that you guys all talk to your doctors first. Make sure that you can push your heart rate this hard. But the role of speed training is to tax your cardiovascular system. So to tax your heart rate, to ha your heart and your lungs. Um, your heart rate probably, or your heart probably really doesn't know the difference between mile six and mile seven. Like if you were to watch your heart rate and you hit mile six and you hit mile seven, it's not like you're going to see these huge jumps in your heart rate. Um, and so a true assessment of cardiovascular fitness is how quickly your heart rate recovers. So if you do a sprint, and your heart rate goes up to, I don't know, 170. Time how long it takes it to get back down to 120. And keep an eye on that number. And as you progress in your training, does your heart rate recover faster? Are you noticing that your heart, when it goes from 170 to 120, happens in like half the time that it did when it started. And that's a true assessment of what your heart and your lungs are capable of. Um, and so 
that's why speed training is important because it helps that those high bursts of energy um, make your heart and your lungs learn to help you over a prolonged period of time. So that's why Seth has you doing multiple intervals in your program. That's why he has you doing it as part of your training. Um, and that's why heart rate training is important is so that you can watch what's happening and feel what's happening. Um, so my recommendation for people to be in, able to integrate all these things in is listed here. Um, and so I, I give a range of one to three days because I understand life happens. You know, there's some weeks that you have more time than others. But if you can make sure you're at least dedicating one day a week to strengthening, obviously in the program you're already doing the one to two days of speed training. But if you can make sure you give yourself a day where you're loving your joints and working on the quickness on, on and off your feet, um, it's just really important to overall, which helps minimize these injuries. When you do all these things together, your joints are happy, your muscles are happy, your tendons and ligaments move better, um, and it just keeps things from getting really irritated. Um, now, obviously, if you're not in Chicago, if you're in New York, um, I can help you find PTs that offer complementary injury screens. There are running tech, you know, look up who the running technique specialist is in your area. Um, we all, most of us PTs offer some form of a complementary injury screen. And so they're always, PTs are great resources because we're movement specialists um, to help you figure out if an injury is coming up because you don't want an injury to stop you. Um, so anything we can do to help you get through the race is um, really important. You can look up in your area who's maybe a Graston provider. So Graston is a great way to do some soft tissue work to keep everything healthy. Um, maybe if you're now into cupping, because that's what Michael Phelps <laughs> was doing, I can help you find someone who does cupping in your area. So, um, you know, there's there's a variety of soft tissue um, techniques like we talked about the yobility or foam rolling, things like that. If you guys have any questions on soft tissue management, um, that's what, you know, that's what a thing you want to make sure that you're taking care of to keep those muscles and joints happy as you are working on all the other parts of it. Um, and I think too, just as we talked about on the webinar with Alex a couple of weeks ago, these aren't huge add-ons where we're talking large time commitments because we're all busy. We're all busy individuals with work and families and social obligations. So um, what Denise is talking about, these are things that you can easily implement into your training program. Um, and if you have questions on that, certainly, you know, you'll want to contact either myself and or Denise. Um, and certainly, you know, Denise can, if you have more questions or you're interested in more of the, the form work, and let's say you live in, you know, California um, and you're like, Hey, you know, this, this, pose method. Uh, I'm interested in it. I've, I've been dealing with nagging injuries and it feels like, you know, each run is a slog and yeah, you know, this, this talk about, you know, quicker cadence and just being more efficient. It's, in, it's, it interests me. Then, you know, I would contact Denise. She can do a great job of connecting you with the appropriate individual in or individuals in your area. But just keep in mind, this, this is all tangible stuff, stuff that can be done um, and implemented in uh, into your current training program. So we'll have, uh, I think it'll be a good idea in the, the kind of the show notes of everything when we send out the email with, with the recording and the link and everything, we'll send out links to the various um, exercises that Denise referenced so you have it in one easy, um, easy to find location. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, and if you guys have questions on any of this, you know, contact me, um, follow up with Alex. You've, if you have questions on good ways to use a lacrosse ball, um, foam rollers are amazing too, to help keep those tissues loose. So just making sure that, you know, you're giving love to all these structures that are supporting you, um, is just really important. And so, um, you know, any questions that you guys have along the way, that's why Seth and I are here. We want to keep you guys healthy, um, to get up to the, to get to the finish line. Um, as best as you guys can. Absolutely. And don't forget, um, if you have a question right now, feel free to type that into the chat section. Um, and if you think of a question at like 930 tonight, shoot me an email, shoot Denise an email. And to that, Denise, why don't you tell everybody where they can connect with you, find you. There you <laughs> go. There's a great segue. Um, so you know, um, we try to, my whole goal is to teach you guys as much as I can. So I try to pack all my sites with educational materials. Um, so if there's something you want to know about that I don't have out there, um, let me know and I'll post it for you guys. Um, 
on our blog. I try to do blogs about things that affect all athletes, not just runners. So if you have anyone in your life that has an issue with anything, I'm always here as a resource. Um, or I can make sure I make an introduction to somebody that can help you if you're not in my area or, um, you know, maybe you, you need something different that I don't offer. Um, so I, again, I, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I appreciate the hard work you're putting into training, um, and the fundraising part of it that you guys are doing more challenging races like Chicago and New York. Um, I just think again, you guys are great. So thanks for being an inspiration to, you know, technique specialists like me and letting us injury prevention specialists know that we still have a place in the world, um, to help you guys. Absolutely. Well, if nobody has questions, we're going to wrap that up. So, oh, Bethany does have a question. Yeah. So Bethany at, or states, I've been having pain in the back of my ankle on the left side over the last week. I know it's because my muscles are too tight. Is it better for me to continue to do yoga or are there other elasticity exercises I should be doing? How about yes? <laughs> <laughs> so yoga is awesome. I'm so glad that you're doing yoga because it's going to give your hip joints, your low back, your knees, your ankles, everything that contributes to how the back of that ankle is um, working. Um, so I think you should keep doing that. And then elasticity, like you, you, you totally nailed it. Like that's why you're probably getting a little bit of irritation is that if it's your Achilles, maybe that's acting up or, um, you know, where the plantar fascia inserts kind of at the bottom of that heel bone and can maybe tug is the, the quicker you're coming on and off your feet, um, will help as well. So I would try things like jumping rope, um, running backwards, skipping, um, doing karaoke or grapevine, whatever you know it by, and then turn, go into a run and see if maybe if you run backwards, does that hurt you? If it's not hurting you, it's showing you that if you improve where you're landing and how quickly you're coming on and off your feet, that it might be, um, that's where your problem is, is that you're just spending too long on the ground. And so working on the ability to come on and off the ground, that el elasticity will really help. And probably using some of the mobility techniques that Alex yeah. mentioned with like a little cross ball or something like that to just to get the tissues moving. Yeah. And not just your ankle tissues, but work the whole chain, work your calf, work the back of your knee, work your quads and your inner thigh muscles and your butt muscles, specifically your hip and butt muscles. Um, a lot of our problems in our lower leg come from a issue at the top of the leg. So yeah. spending time just working the whole area. Absolutely. So Sue has an, a question. Are there specific training techniques for those who are over 55? Should we be running less days and doing more strengthening days, more flexibility days? Um, I, You're welcome, Bethany, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I know some people are like, I'm older. Do I have to do more or less? I, I don't know if age has anything to do with it, but maybe it just puts you at a higher risk um, and because your rate of recovery will take a little bit longer. So obviously if you're 25, you know, 17 to 25, you can – go out and push yourself really hard and be fine the next day. Um, like I always think about when I was in college, I could stay up all night and then still get up in the next morning and go for a run and feel great. Now, if I'm up with one of my kids the next morning, I am like just so slow and tired. So I just think it takes us a little bit longer to recover. So maybe just doing more targeted and more um, thoughtful exercises can help with that. So you're not having to spend more time and decreasing your running days, but maybe just finding more time to do more specific things to help you. If that makes sense, Sue. I think it's too, all the things that we're talking about with the form work and the mobility work and the strength training. Um, these are just all great ingredients to the overall recipe, I think. And, um, whether you're 25 or 55 or 85, there's a valuable lesson to learn here that, um, to, to purely just think that you're going to hop out the door and run and, and every run's going to be a success and that's all that you do is, is, is not the case. That's just not how things work. It's what Denise brought up with, with Michael Phelps. You know, if you've seen any, any of his promo commercials, the Under Armour commercials and all the different things that he does, I mean, it's just incredible. And, you know, we're all athletes, um, whether you're training for a marathon or a 5K or just to be able to eventually run for 30 minutes, you're all athletes. So I would look at, you know, I, I would approach training with an athlete's mindset, not necessarily a runner's mindset. 
uh, because runners have a tendency, and, and I've been guilty of this in the past, to only want to run. And if you're anything like me, that has um, unfortunately at times ended dis- disastrously. So um, these are all, I think these are all just really great things that are tangible, they're realistic, that can be worked into your program. Doesn't matter if you're 55 um, or, like I said, 85. Um, you know, if you're not doing these things now, uh, there's still time. There's still time. Don't think that it's too late because, oh gosh, Chicago's in two months or New York's in three months or, you know, I'm doing the Marine Corps marathon or, or, you know, the Disney marathon in January. It's, you know, there's no better time than now. Are there any other questions? And again, you're going to be able to, if there's anything that either, well, not really that I said, that Denise said tonight that you're not quite sure on and you want to listen to. Again, this is all going to be available um, uh, on not only my YouTube uh, channel, but also Denise's. And uh, we'll send out the link here in the next day or so. Any lasting words of wisdom, Denise, before we hop off? Um, I think that when you think about this as a recovery plan, um and you make your recovery as a part of your training, like you guys make time for strengthening or you make time for um, speed days. You make time for long days. Just make time for your recovery. How am I going to take care of my body as just part of my routine? And I think once you get into a re- routine, maybe you're foam rolling at the end of the day. Maybe you're doing your joint mobility work while you're playing with your puppy. Um w- just if you make it part of your routine, then it's not such a big time commitment because it's just worked in. Um, so if you just think about how you're going to, you know, what nutrition you're going to do, how you're sleeping, how you're loving your joints and giving the muscles some, um, love with rolling out on it. You know, I think if you just work it in, then it's not such a big deal. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, Oh, one more question. There we go, Bethany. Absolutely. Fire away. She's, I'm sure, typing furiously typing. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you can just see the questions pop up. Uh-huh. And... If you're good, if you're going to start stretching, do I need to do a really good warm up beforehand? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on when you run. So poor Seth has like an hour long commute before he comes in here and works with me. So I make him warm up before because he's just been sitting in a car after he's been sitting all day. So I'm going to make him do some, a warm up, and, um, it's really just to get the blood flowing. So if you're a runner that goes first thing in the morning and you hop out of bed and you go for a run, I would just spend, even if it's the two minutes when you're brushing your teeth, if you brush your teeth before you run, um, even if it's then you want to, um, I, so yeah, a little warm up beforehand just to get the blood flowing. You're and you're telling your joints, all right, this is what we're about to do. Um, even you should probably do a warm up before you run. So even if your warm up is running backwards, skipping karaoke, maybe some hops and maybe some hip dips, you could do a drill, then run about 20 meters. Do a drill, run 20 meters. So before you know it, you might have a half a mile into your run that you were using as your warm-up. So again, you're not having to waste so much time. And if you're going to start stretching, you just do, you know, if you're in the bathroom brushing your teeth, um, just moving before you get going, just to help that joint wake up so it knows what you're about to ask um, to do. And then you followed it up with, does this apply to foam rolling as well? Um, I would say yes, just because I have done it where I've hopped out of bed and foam rolled first thing in the morning and it just doesn't feel good. So again, more blood flow, um, I think will help. And it doesn't, you don't have to spend hours or minute long minutes doing the warm up. It could be as simple as a two minute warm up, just telling the joint, okay, wake up a little bit. We're about to start moving. Um, let's get some blood in there. Um, just so you're not quite as, as stiff from sitting or laying. All great questions. You are welcome, Bethany. You're welcome, Bethany. <laughs> we'll give it another minute in case we have more questions. So, as I mentioned, the link to this webinar will be sent out here in the coming days. Um, the prior three webinars are already on the Cough Running YouTube channel. So if you haven't viewed those, I um, suggest that you do that. We mentioned Alex's webinar quite a bit tonight. Uh, Denise also mentioned the um, webinar with uh, 
Karen Shanahan from last month that she kind of built off of that, which um, we did tonight. So you want to check that out. And then also the webinar with Tom Jordan, um, uh, registered dietitian extraordinaire. So check those out if you haven't already. Um, and with that said, I want to thank Denise for jumping on tonight and sharing her expertise. Um, very, very grateful to her. And um, for the, all of those you, uh, for all of those people out there, good luck in your training. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to either email myself or Denise. So uh, with that, have a great evening, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Good luck to all of you.